prayer for illumination. Holy God, whether it's through angels or music, friendship or stories, study or nature, when you speak, we long to hear it. In a world as chaotic and broken as ours, we could use your words of hope and healing. With gratitude we pray. Amen. Scripture reading, Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 56. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt within her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women, and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. Mary said, with all my heart, I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God, my Savior. God has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is God's name. God shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next who honors him as God. God has shown, shown strength with his, with his arm. God has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. God has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty handed. God has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day, for your holy and living word, its meaning in our lives today and forevermore. We give you thanks for this holy season that we know is Advent, and we ask that in these moments, the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Well, this gospel lesson is perhaps one of the most well-known and familiar in all the Advent season. We hear about Mary who is visited by an angel, a messenger of God, Mary is told by this messenger that she will have a child and that this child will be the savior of the world. Mary says yes to God's amazing and life-changing invitation. After saying yes, we are told in the scriptures that she rushes off to see her cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth welcomes Mary in and Elizabeth herself is expecting a child. And one could say that this is also an unexpected and unusual pregnancy for Elizabeth is advanced in age. These two women, they spend time together. And my read on this text is that Mary stays with Elizabeth until Elizabeth gives birth to her child. We are told in the scriptures that the child Elizabeth is carrying will be known as John the Baptist. Earlier in Luke's gospel, this is how I get there, earlier in Luke's gospel, Elizabeth and her cousin Zechariah are told that they will have a child that will be John the Baptist. It says that Elizabeth was in seclusion for five months. The gospel goes on to say that Mary is told the news about Jesus in the sixth month. And as the story continues, we hear that Mary stays with Elizabeth for three months. So all of this timing, all this math in the scripture is fascinating to me. And it tells me a story about companionship, the sacred work of staying with one another, the value of relationships in times of waiting and anticipation. I imagine Mary being there when Elizabeth goes into labor and bears this child named John. It's a beautiful scene. And I used to focus on all of this, the baby being born and the baby 
that will one day soon be born. Through the years, I myself have I've come to assume and believe that my own experience as a mother provides me a unique perspective on this gospel lesson. I've preached in the past about how this meeting between Mary and Elizabeth was kind of like a baby shower, biblical times style. But what if? What if this story is not about a baby? At least not yet. A baby is coming, but is not yet here. Right now, what is here is two women who extend compassion to one another, love and care for each other. What if the story is not about our ability to bear a child? What if this story is not about our choice to give birth to a baby? What if this story is instead about our ability to bear God to one another? Theotokos is ancient Christianity's name for Mary, especially in the Eastern Christian world. This word was used, <clears throat> used as the title for the mother of the savior of the world. And in Greek, this word is translated God bearer, one who carries God to others, one who shows forth compassion, the compassion, love, and mercy of God one who embodies and shares a sacred presence to others. How might we continue to bear God to one another in these days? This is a story, not just for women. This is a gospel message for all of us, for all who choose to bear God, for all who choose to bring the good news of justice, mercy, and love to a world that is in need of healing, mercy, and compassion. I want to share with you just a few words um, from a modern day written poem about the Magnificat by Marion Tarabasi, a United Church of Christ pastor. She writes, my soul is a lens for God, my spirit castanets, for God has made me pregnant for the sake of all the children forever. The mighty one finds sanctuary in me. God brings health care justice to all and denies the wealthy the power of prescription, gives clean wells to Africa and takes away designer water bottles. God deploys these new forces, hope for the suicidal, peace for the undocumented immigrant, joy for the jobless, love for those whose lives have been twisted by bad news. Friends, may we see God in one another. And wait, may we bear the love of God to one another in this season so that we can go forth into the world and extend love and justice, peace and mercy to all. Amen.